Karen, so I've been denying my emotions, now what am I going to do about it, right? So there's three A's here. Okay, first A, this is our flip point out of denial, okay? The first A is I need to accept that I have emotions, especially as women, and these um, brekkie events are for women in leadership, designed specifically for women in leadership, but this is true for men as well. And so acceptance is about knowing that we are feeling beings. We are not just thinking beings, we are feeling beings, and that's a really important distinction. And if we can accept that we have emotions, then that's our way out of denial. Because when, as you know, when we're denying our emotions, we're asleep to what's really going on and we're just reacting, okay? So acceptance, the next step is acknowledgement. I need to acknowledge and name my emotions. Yeah. So I accept that I'm a feeling being and I have emotions. Now I'm starting to get scared because I know that that's going to bring out a, you know, a feeling or a, an experience that I've been running away from for a long time. But I'm going to tell you why it's important shortly. So acceptance, to, just need to acknowledge and name those emotions. So the way that we do that, one of the ways we can do that, and I'm going to talk about this a bit later, is to stop and breathe and just go, okay, what is it that I'm feeling right now? Is it sadness? Is it feeling alone? Is it joy? Is it pleasure? Is it, I can't believe how excited I am. Let me express that. So what is the emotion that you're feeling? So an acknowledgement. And then a practice of awareness. So the awareness is then in any moment that we're in a meeting or in a conversation with our children or having an argument with our partner or having a beautiful intimate embrace with our partner, we have the awareness of the emotions that are running through us. And if we can breathe into that and start to own and accept that, that allows us to show up in a whole new way with the fullness of ourselves. Whereas before we're showing up as a small amount of ourselves because we're half present, because we're denying, busy denying our emotions. Are you with me so far? So when we're in acceptance and acknowledgement, um, so I wanna put some th three things here. So acceptance is about self-responsibility. So we have to take 100% responsibility to even accept that we have emotions. Yes, I'm a feeling being. I'm going to take responsibility for actually being a feeling being. So that's the distinction of self-responsibility, yeah? The next one, what have I got here, is self-reckoning. <laughs> so when we acknowledge and name, that's where the self-reckoning comes in. That's some of the work of becoming more self-aware. So if I acknowledge that I'm feeling jealous, if I acknowledge that I'm feeling guilty, if I acknowledge that I'm feeling not enough or shameful or embarrassed or any, of the, any emotion, then that's the reckoning with myself. Those are the moments where I've actually got to come into, I'm sort of facing myself in the mirror and going, you know what? I've got all of these things going on inside me and if I can just be with them and own them, I can feel my power starting to expand, yes? And so from there to awareness, this then, this is the beautiful place of self-trust we start to build a place of self-trust. And self-trust is essential if we're gonna trust others. Because here's the thing about trust, and it's a big topic, the thing about trust is we all, we're all waiting for someone else to change their behavior so we can trust them more. The thing that we don't talk about with trust is it starts with self-trust. Because when I'm trusting myself, you can behave however you wanna behave and then I can choose to engage or not, rather than me being dependent on you to change yourself so that I can feel differently. So when we're doing that, it has a huge impact on our freedom and our feeling of wholeness and our ability to express ourselves and be the leader that we want to be. So self-trust is really key and this is how we start to build it. So this is the pivot point, right? Cool. And so when we go from there, when we start to become more aware and build this self-trust, then it's about embrace. So remember I said this conversation today is about embracing our emotions so we can be our most powerful self. So I'm going to give you a moment, uh, stop in a moment and give you a chance to reflect on where you might be. So embracing our emotions and that is about courage, right? If I can embrace my emotions in a world that tells me I shouldn't be emotional and within, a, within maybe a relationship where emotions aren't welcome and I'm told I'm too emotional, by the way, I've been told that many times over my life, and it took me until I started to do this work to actually be not call that anymore 
at, em, own my emotions and be them and then express them in a healthy way and allow that to guide me. So that's when I notice people stop calling me too emotional or too much. Anyone been called too much before? Um, and it's not that they were right and I was wrong. It's just that I, I, what I understood was I've been denying and suppressing my emotions, that they were just spurting out at times when people were like, whoa, yeah, it was kind of a disproportionate reaction. And I'm like, no, I'm just a passionate person. Well, true, but I wasn't, I wasn't processing my emotions in a healthy way and doing this work, yeah? And then the last piece here is embody. I love this work, this word here, embody or embodiment. John Wineland is an expert in men, uh, men, masculine and women, sorry, masculine and feminine, men and women, and that could be, you know, we have masculine and feminine in all of us, so it doesn't mean men are all masculine, women are all feminine. But he does, John Wineland, he does great work around embodiment for men and women in our masculine and feminine energies. And that was a big part of my journey as well. So when we embody our emotions and all of ourselves, this is when, this is when, I've missed one piece, but that's a matter. I missed one piece, but freedom, connection, and flow. This freedom and connection that we're seeking, so here's the thing, masculine searches for freedom, so the masculine is always striving for to feel free, so that's why you might experience if you're in a heterosexual relationship sometimes, um, the man's always running trying to get away into his man cave, so um, that's the search for freedom, whereas a feminine drive or need is for connection, so there's push-pull that goes on within us and also in our relationships. But this is the state that we're searching for, but we're usually down here searching for it, yes? So we need to do this work and then what's the byproduct of this work is this, yeah?